Welcome to Podcasts Across Worlds. I'm your host, Lehua Superfina. And I'm One Eye. We are people who like to read a lot of manga and watch a lot of anime. We realize that we all like similar titles and we could talk about them for hours. So here we are in Podcasts Across Worlds to talk about anime, manga, and everything else we're interested in. In this episode of Podcasts Across Worlds, we are going to talk about an anime that I suggested, which is Tanya the Evil. I saw this on Country Row. I kept seeing it and I actually dismissed it at first because the thumbnail for this anime looks so dark. And mm-hmm. I don't normally look or watch dark genres. So I was like, nah. But because I kept seeing it and it was a picture of a young girl in a sort of like dark theme i was like you know what let's check it out and then i read the summary and i was like oh okay this is different totally different from what i thought and i never hear people talking about it i thought one i would enjoy this or find it interesting it was definitely interesting um I actually had heard of it prior to your recommendation. A friend of mine who eats uh, isekai mangas like children eat candy uh, mentioned it to me. (laughs) So uh, one of the sort of minor reveals was already known to me, which is good because I, I don't know how I'd have taken to the series if I thought Tanya was actually a child. Right, right. Like, it'd be far more disturbing to me, both, like, what's going on with her and the fact that it's, like, supposed to be a kid that's doing all this, like, heinous shit. Right. So, like, when I saw the cover, I was like, wait, this is a little girl, and she looks so psychotic. I was so turned off by that. Yeah, they're actively calling her evil. Like, what's going on? Right? So, Tanya the Evil is about a man in... Japan Earth. I'm saying Japan Earth because later on I'm going to explain it. Mm-hmm. Japan Earth. He is a modern corporate. day. Modern day. He's a corporate worker, mm-hmm. and he's really good at his job. He's his job perfect. seems to be firing people. Firing people. He's organized. He knows how to work the system. He needs to. He knows you got to work hard. Kiss up to the right people, or not kiss up, maybe please them. Rub, rub elbows with the right yeah. higher ups. So he's he's, he's he's very like mind, like very like structurally minded, I guess. Like he looks at everything as like a construct, be it a physical construct, a societal construct, what have you. He's uh, logical to a disturbing degree. Right, and then. Because he fired someone, that person who got fired was resentful. And while this guy is waiting for the train, he gets pushed and the train hits him. We don't see that part, but we know what happened. Uh, yeah, this is a slight inversion to the isekai formula because he wasn't ushered into the new world by a uh, truck coon. <laughs> That's right. It's usually it's usually a truck, isn't it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> At nighttime. Yes, <laughs> that's what the Grim Reaper looks like in Japan, I guess. <laughs> it's this truck that's driving at night, and no matter like how you're crossing the street, it will always hit you because it's your time. And so, when he dies or is about to die, God shows up. God shows up and they're having a conversation and our main character is like, I don't believe in God. He is such a stone cold atheist that he is talking to God right now and says, I don't believe in you. He's like, you're, you're, you're a hallucination. <laughs> you're still- clearly a hallucination I'm having as I'm dying right now. It's like, even yeah. as I'm making all these people talk to you, yes, as you make all these people talk, blah, 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 I'm not even going to call you God. You're being X. 
Right. Right. He's like um, rationalizing everything. He's like, you're another being. You're being X. And so God gets upset. And he's like, if you are. So our main character is explaining why he doesn't believe in God. Because God is like, you know, people used to pray to me, worship me. They used to like call on to my name. And so I'm literally character- being nice enough to talk to you right now. W- what is going on? And our main character is rationalizing. Is like, yeah, that's because back then people needed you. They were powerless. They are in horrible times. And I don't need you. I worked, I worked for what I have right now. I worked my way up. I, everything that I am successful in was on me. I did it myself. I didn't need you. I have all the resources around me. Why would I need the help from a being X? Someone Mm -hmm. who doesn't exist. And then God's like, so if you're put in a dire situation, you would believe in me then? You would need me? (laughs) And then our main character is like, wait, wait, no, 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 I didn't say that. And then B next is like, you know what? We're gonna reincarnate you, and <laughs> you're gonna have a second chance in life. Have fun, and it just will have fun because there will be no more turns. There will be no more retries. <laughs> and then our main character like realizes what's going to happen. It's like, no, I thought you couldn't reincarnate anymore. I thought you're too tired to do that. And B next is like. I changed my mind. <laughs> yep. Well, he says he changed his mind in this case, but you're not going to get any retries after this. Yeah. And then, so our main character, I totally forgot what his name was when he was on Earth Japan. Mm-hmm. Gets reincarnated. I, I, I don't know if they give his name or not. I don't think they did. But he gets reincarnated in a world that's like Earth, and it looks like it's Europe. It looks like it's like Germany, or yeah. it's like it looks like it's Germany during it, like it's basically Germany during World War One. Yeah, and um, so he gets reincarnated in an area that's at war. In the past, where technology is not as advanced and as a girl, a girl, so at a time where there is discrimination against women. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so he is in the worst predicament ever. And, 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 and he's an orphan. Yep. A war orphan. Yeah, a war orphan. So it's like, okay, go. Tell me that you don't need God anymore. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like God purposely put him in this situation to make him need God. Mm-hmm. Which is so it's like sadistic. Yeah, so this is uh right out the gate. This is <laughs> a story where there's kind of no one to root for. <laughs> Because on the one hand, you have your 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 would be main character who is uh, probably a high functioning sociopath because he can't seem to understand the feelings of anyone around him and doesn't seem to have any actual empathy for anyone. Um, is very much uh, ruthless, a user, and by his own admission, has a twisted personality. Like there's nothing like nice about this person. But his like an uh, opponent, so to speak, is supposedly God. But this version of God is just such a petty bitch. <laughs> he is petty. Like, fucking petty. It's like so, like you could you could have just like smited this person or just been like, okay, you don't reincarnate, you go now. But it's like, no, 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 no. I'm gonna make you love me. <laughs> I'm gonna use a literal lifetime to make you. Like, like, bow to me. And so our main character is now a girl named Tanya. Tanya, she's an orphan, 
And unfortunately, she has an aptitude to magic. To magic. There's magic in this world. Mm -hmm. And orphans, when they when they have a high aptitude to magic, they get taken in to be part of the military. Mm -hmm. And she excels in it. She excels in it. And because she used to be a grown man that knew how the world functions, she knew that she needs to get to a position so she can live a relaxing life as much as she can mm -hmm. in her predicament. So she's taking these steps and she's succeeding. You know, she's going into like she's in like what school she like goes a military school and gets like officers training and is basically like taking what whatever steps she can to move up in rank so she can get herself positioned i think she was describing like 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 on the back line so to speak which is to say mm -hmm. somewhere in the proximity of the war but away from the actual fighting mhm mm mhm mm Basically, trying to get herself like a like a like an office job within the military. Right, right. So she's trying to do that as fast as she can, so she can be in that perfect quote perfect life quote. Mm -hmm. And along the way, God interferes. God yeah. interferes, trying habitually. <laughs> Try to drive her into these predicaments, these life dangering predicaments. And it's like, what the hell? But Tanya, she's like, you know what? I'll overcome this. Like, for example, she's, I think this was like the first time God interfered where she's testing out these these amulets yeah that... the, uh, amulets are what they sort of use to channel their magical energies and they're she's trying to she's being used to test one that has like the power of like four i think mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's the power of like four of those amulets in one but it's highly unstable yeah so she's skinny pig she's testing it out and they're like she's perfect because she has a lot of magic. She's perfect for this. And, uh, you know, she gets the tests don't work out. So she sends out a letter like, hey, stop this project, stop this testing. It's not safe. Can I be transferred to this other place? And then God interferes by talking to one of the scientists, making them feel like they're inspired like oh my gosh god spoke to me it's a sign i need to keep going and and forces the test to keep going before it closes and god interfered with that one amulet in the test to function right mm -hmm. he, he fixed it yeah, and what was it? Was that the time where God told Tanya, like, if you pray to me, I'll save you? I think basically the idea, he kind of, like, tricked the doctor into fixing it, but adding almost like a defect to it where it won't function properly unless she prays. Right, right, right. And so that's another so yeah thing. like he says outright that he's basically this this is a plot to condition her so that like she has to pray every time she wants to use this amulet and the the being able to use the amulet has like saved her any number of times both her very life but also any operation that she was working on where the in excuse me the enemy got the upper hand so the idea is that she, he, God will create a positive association with prayer in Tanya's head so that she doesn't even have to accept him consciously. Not to save her, not to help her, not to redeem her soul, but just because that's, that's what he want. That's what he want to. 
you will you will obey me because he's petty. I don't want to call him God anymore. I want to call him being X now being, because I'm not very God. Yeah, yeah. Being X is a fitting name for for this thing, even if it even if it's supposed to be God in that world. That ain't no God I heard of. Mm -mm. That ain't my God. I don't, I don't claim him. I was so disturbed by being X, forcing Tanya to pray. Just so Tanya could acknowledge being ex. I was like, you are so psychotic that mm -hmm. you would put this person in danger just so they could pray for you. What the hell? You are manipulating her. You are not being fair. You already put her in a warring era where she does not have as much privilege and she has to like even no matter how hard she works she probably wouldn't be as, as successful as she is right now yeah but both because she's a woman and a child right she's a woman a child with no family influence like there's mm -hmm. no one there to support her she had no one and you're you're making it harder for her and I just find it so fascinating that Tanya is like overcoming all of this. Like, yeah, she has to pray to be an ex, but she's like, whatever, I'll just use you. Mm -hmm. Literally fighting with a god. <laughs> um, yeah, though it's funny because it's like is is like, and this is why I say there's there's kind of no one to root for in this series as like petty and shitty as being X is being in regards to like, is this is the really, it's, it's the pettiness. It's you're, you're like a transcendental being. You're like a higher life form. Why are you picking on this one dude? Um, at the same time here, you have Tanya trying to like, you know, battle with this thing and find, find a good life. But to that end, she's like using and sometimes abusing literally everyone within eye shot. <laughs> like she doesn't do a single good thing in this series that doesn't have immediate benefit to her and her alone. Like even when it seems like she's doing something like nice, like they almost got me when she's in the cafe talking with that uh, one like commander type dude. And he's saying like, like, he's trying to talk her out of talk her into resigning because he can't stand seeing a kid on the battlefield because he's got a, a kid her age mm -hmm. and she's like in, in, in the conversation they have it seems very warm it seems very kind and it seems like she's trying to talk him out of uh you know getting out of harm's way and right as i'm starting to think oh maybe i can like this character the first goddamn words out of her mouth is good now this person won't beat me to the top rank i'm like you mother did you just do one good thing? She's like, less competition. God. <laughs> like, that one made me mad just because it almost got me. And um, remember when I said, said that, like, she knows that she needs to rub elbows with the right higher ups? Mm -hmm. The part where she's talking to the strategist, the head strategist. Oh um, yeah, <laughs> on the military, and he's like inquiring her thoughts, you know, probing, and, and then he's he, grilling her too. Grilling her, and she's like, "Oh, I, this this feels like an interview. I need to impress him." Mm -hmm. So you know, she's doing that. She is impressing him. She impressed him too much. Yep, too much to the point where she's thinking. Gore, I totally have a position in an office. Mm -hmm. And he requests her to be in the front lines. Yeah, like not even like like just like frontline um soldiers, but literally like a like a clandestine unit. Like they literally send them into there, into the line of fire for like covert stuff. Yeah. She wants no, not she. He wants her to be like, oh, what are those names? Oh shoot, um, raiders. Yeah. Rangers. 
like rangers. rangers yeah 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 rangers like he he wants her to make a team a unit make a unit like rangers and send them out for covert operations where they have no support except for them for themselves and she's like oh hell no and this wasn't even god who interfered <laughs> it was her own fault that she got into that yeah that's like the other half if it's not uh, being x screwing with her then it's her plans going too well <laughs> And so, like, from, from the outsider looking in, it seems like she's, you know, doing everything she wants to. Like, like she's a career soldier. That they don't realize she's actually been trying to find her way, like, off the battlefield. Like, comfortably off the battlefield <laughs> mm -hmm. like, from day one. Like, she knows she has to be part of this military, but she wants to be someplace safe during this war. And, yeah, because she's also trying to get that military pension. Yes, yes. And so, okay, she, right, she has to make this unit. All right. They're expecting her to recruit. She's like, okay, I can recruit people. She makes it hard. And it's so funny. Like, she makes a flyer. And the way she describes this unit, she makes it sound like the worst thing you can join. Like, the benefits are horrible. Pay is bad. Food is bad. Living mm -hmm. is bad. You will die. That's literally what was on the flyer. And she had people showing up. Mm -hmm. Not only that, but then she was, like, bugging the interview. Using, like, like uh, was it uh, illusions, like magic-based illusions and stuff that mm -hmm. she was demanding they be able to see through before she'd recruit them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Though that in of itself was a ploy, too. She was trying to buy time and avoid going to the front line. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, she was trying so hard not to go on the front lines. She was stalling hard. Yeah, and everything would... I think that's one of the things that makes this uh, kind of uh, interesting to watch, even though you don't really have a relatable character to follow. <laughs> It's just looking to see like how many of her plans are going to backfire and in what way. <laughs> right. And so eventually she does uh, get people and, you know, somehow she like takes ownership pride of her unit. She's like, you know what? If I have to make this unit, if I have to make what, what's the, what's the term for this? Mm -hmm. That's the end. Battalion? Battalion? Battalion! That's what it's called. Battalion. <clears throat> battalion. So she has to make this mage battalion, then so be it. So she makes them the best they can be. <laughs> She's like, okay, I can't stall this. I can't stop this. I can't work around this. I'll make it the best it can be. And then maybe my merits would reflect and I'll get to that cushy position. Mm -hmm. So she does that. And her accomplishments backfire. <laughs> yeah, because they need her. <laughs> they need that crazy unit she put together. She she kind of makes herself indispensable, which on one sense is kind of good. But uh, it's far. it's the furthest thing away from what she actually wanted. And the other thing is she uses that, what would you call it, that gift from being X. Mm -hmm. X. She uses that amulet mm -hmm. and powers up her weapon when she's in battle, which makes her battles victorious, you know, adding yeah, more to her merit. She basically, she gets to the point where she's able to succeed in missions that would be suicide for anyone else. So she becomes the only one they can literally send in there. Three, so <laughs> Which is, God, just thinking about it. She just ensures that she's going to get sent on the most dangerous missions every time. 
<laughs> right? Right? So, like, with this amulet, like, when I explain, it's an amulet that's as powerful as four. Four of the standard amulets. And when you combine this with her, like, high magical ability, she's able to pull off things that seem to be impossible, like taking on a whole squad of mages by herself. Uh, I think her go-to trick is to sit at an altitude that should only be reachable by plane. And just kind of take pot shots at either enemy units in the sky or on the ground. Yeah, so with that amulet, it boosts her flying ability. And so she gets to she's able to get to that high altitude and she does those pot shots. And then she prays to God and does like a cannon shot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the thing, is that she can also use the prayer to like boost its strength. And so because of all these accomplishments, instead of saying, all right, you did all you could for us. Thank you so much. Here's a position that you wanted. They're like, no, you're so good. We need to keep you out there. We need you to do this mission and this mission and this one. And this whole time, while the higher ups are making plans, are like looking over the maps, making strategy trying to position her in certain areas so she can execute her operations. You have this one guy who knows how crazy she is. Mm -hmm. And he's trying to take her out of the battle because he views her as a danger. Yeah. But it's something she wants. She wants to be out of the battle and he's trying to get her out. But everybody else is like, no, we need her. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Even when she has someone kind of helping her, mm-hmm. it still doesn't work out. <laughs> yeah, he seems to be one of the like few characters in there with some sort of like morality to him. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like he's worried about the other soldiers that are going to be around Tanya because of her ruthlessness. You know, which which we see even in the first episode where she like sends a couple soldiers off to die because they disobeyed her, even though they were doing it with the best of intentions. The concern wasn't them danger endangering the mission or anything like that. It was that they didn't do what she said. Like petty. Petty. <laughs> like, like if there's a, there's a moral to the series, it's don't be petty. <laughs> Like, if your vengeance is wholly disproportionate to the slight, or if it's something you should be able to just let go, don't do it. Because you're going to drag a whole bunch of people who don't deserve to be in it, in it. Oh, Lord. But, yeah, yeah, so this officer is like, seems to be keen to that and is doing everything in his power to get her out of there. But um, all of his, uh, all the guys he answers to are against it. Both because of uh, how well Tanya is doing and because that the uh, army they're in is due to the length of the war and the fact that they're now fighting multiple enemies are kind of stretched to their wits end. Like every other conversation is about how they're running low on supplies or running low on people or both. Down to the fact that their primary strategy is to have like one major attack force and just enough people in every other location to make it seem like they have a full army. They got pretty detailed Mm -hmm. with the setting of the story. And it works out, especially in these lack of resource for Tanya and it matches with being X being X's plan to put her in a situation to make her pray I think since she was in Germany or Germany a like place she was supposed to be in a losing battle mm-hmm. yeah because like, Germany does not win World War One. yeah so it seemed like being X did that on purpose mm-hmm And so while all of this is happening, Tanya is fighting against the opposing 
country, nation, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. You have uh, not France and not uh, uh, England. (laughs) At least that's what I think they were supposed to be. Yeah. Primarily due to the names of the characters. That's kind of the giveaway of what they're supposed to be an approximation of. And so you have these uh, opposing countries. And somehow Tanya gets the attention of this one guy who gets a little obsessed with her. Because she just annihilated his unit, his army. And every time when he sees her, he has like this whole vengeance drive Mm -hmm. to defeat her. Not because of what he's fighting for, but because it's her. Because she's evil. Yes, because she's evil. And like, I'm pretty sure he thinks she's like some kind of devil. Yeah, he totally thinks that. He totally does. And, um, you know, Tanya wouldn't have this person out to try to kill her if, you know, she she wasn't so good at murdering. Yeah. <laughs> so that kind of backfired on her. She has literal God hacks, literal God hacks. <laughs> and she's making enemies that she wouldn't normally because it wouldn't be possible <laughs> It shouldn't have been possible for her to take out a whole unit by herself, but she did. So it seems like there's this guy over here. He's out to get her, and he dies. He dies, and I'm thinking, okay, that's the end of it. But then they show that he had a daughter, and the daughter's like so distraught at the death of her father. And I think this is at the end of the show. It's show the very her, end, yeah. The very end. And she, they show her wanting to join the army. And I think God talks to her. Yeah, she gets the, so anyone who's kind of blessed in quotes by being X will kind of have their eyes show a certain color. Um, either when they're kind of like channeling, channeling his blessing I'm using blessing in quotes. Um, either when, basically, yeah, when they're channeling his blessing through sort of like magic use. Because uh, her father is uh, saved by being X after the first time he dies. Oh, that's and right. He gets the ability, he gets the same ability Tanya has. If he uh, prays to, if he prays, he can increase his magic to some really high degree. And yeah, the the sort of like sequel tease, cliffhanger, what have you, is show, showing that she now has that ability as well, which likely means being X is acting through her because he's petty. <laughs> so after seeing that, I'm like thinking, wow, God, or, or not even God, being X, wow, he's being a dick. X. <laughs> Yeah, now you're bringing in this girl here. Oh, you're so petty. This is what is this child pit fight? Right? Why do you do this? Like, geez, Louise. And that was the end. Like, mm-hmm. I didn't see any more episodes, but I know there's a light novel in the manga. Yeah, yeah both of those, I think, are they still going? But I bet you, I bet you, when did this come out? This was 2017. Uh, There could be another season. Or this could just be advertising for the novel. But anyways, I know that there's supposed to be more after that season, but... Oh, there's there's a a movie. Like, I didn't see any after that. And I saw this anime, like, quite a while back, okay? Quite a while back. But just from that ending, I could tell that there was supposed to be more. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering about that because, you know, Tanya's on the losing side or supposedly, supposedly the losing side. And, you know, it looked like they were about to enter into another big battle. Yeah, I think uh, the... The differences in this world, magic being the biggest one, 
uh, create a scenario where this is a this is a like a countrywide war, like all of Europe seems to be involved. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Tanya uses her knowledge of the equivalent in her world being World War One to indicate that, you know, outside forces could come into play. And, you know, she's kind of leveraging that knowledge to her own benefit and then it backfires and gets her put on the front line. But yeah, one of the big twists at the end of it is that I don't even know if it's the America equivalent because I think they literally call it the United States is coming into play in regards to the war. Not only that, but you also had the sort of like unification of uh, remnants from the other countries that they conquered coming together as like a rebel army. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it's only now at this point that it's becoming a world war. And it's becoming a world war when they're like stretched thin. Right. So right. even if they were, even if they seem to be on the winning end, they're kind of back to being on the losing end again, or gonna be. And Tanya sees this, and mm -hmm. she's trying to warn her superiors about it, and she's trying to prevent that, or trying to prepare for her army for the attack, and no one's listening to her. And you can see how desperate she is. You can mm -hmm. see, like, I think this is the first time we've ever seen her, like, feeling like she lost or looking like, like she lost. Like feeling, feeling help, like a, a sense of helplessness. Yeah. Yeah. Helplessness, defeated. Like, she looked defeated. She's like, F you, being X, you won. It's like, you, you fucked me. You fucked me good. Yeah, you raggedy bitch. I think she did, did say that. She's like, "You fucked me. <laughs> you got what you wanted." And Oof. instead of like praising, asking for help from being X, she's like cursing being X. Yeah, yeah. You you get that kind of fake out where it looks like she's finally just gonna do it to survive, or to ensure her like reincarnation or something. <laughs> and then she's just like. No, God has no place on the battlefield. We'll do it without him. Fuck him. Yeah. <laughs> like she's so like it it looks like she's rebelling. Like she's mm -hmm. so rebellious. But she's like, I hate him. He's using the situation to make me believe in him. No, I will not play into his ploy. No. Yeah. <laughs> She's making the she she's carefully dancing around it in the speech so she doesn't sound like a like a heretic. Yeah. <laughs> but but she is throwing major shade. Like literally and, all of it. Yeah. And what I find so interesting is like not only like is she everything she's doing is becoming the opposite. Mm -hmm. Like to you and I, she looks evil, but to her superiors, she looks amazing. Like yeah. she's so successful in what she's doing. Like she and, just looks like a model soldier. And then her battalion, they first viewed her as like the evil witch that trains them so bad that they're on the verge of dying to the point where they're like viewing her affectionately. It's like, oh, that's our leader. Mm hmm. They lead us to victory. And she's like, I hate you all. You can all die for all I care. I just want that cushy office position. Yeah, it's basically like uh, the only reason why I don't sacrifice you all now is because it would make me look bad. Yeah, she says that too. She says that. She's like, I can't have any of you dying. It makes me look bad. Mm -hmm. And... That's another reason why she went on solo missions because she's thinking, I can't have any of them die or that will reflect upon me and I won't get that office job. Mm -hmm. Like, damn. Yeah. Fucking cold. <laughs> Even like nice things she does for them is just, it's again, it's just to benefit her in the long run. It's, it's, 
She's a sociopath. Honestly, I don't think I would have watched a whole season if I was watching it week by week. Mm. Because, like, her personality was just, like, so selfish. I was like, I don't like you. And if this was, if I had to wait a week for the next episode, I'll probably be like, eh, I can wait. But because all the episodes were out, I was binge watching. I was watching it. (laughs) I was like, okay, I got to know what happens next. I can see it. I watched the next thing. I was like, oh my gosh, I got to see the next episode. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Because even though her personality is horrible, she's interesting. You're kind of curious as to what's going to happen. Yeah. That's that's kind of the the factor that draws you. Because it's not out of like sympathy for either character. Is Tanya, you know, I've already gone into it. Tanya's a high functioning sociopath with no trace of empathy, and being X is an almighty petty bastard. You're not really invested in either one of them winning this conflict. Um, but you are curious as to see what's gonna happen over the course of it. Yeah, and I, I kind of had a hope that she would kind of change where she wouldn't be so selfish. Mm-hmm. And she would take more accountability and pride in her battalion or the army. Like, she yeah. wants them to succeed. She wants them to win this battle. Yeah, like, maybe she would or, develop some sort of attachment to them. Right. So, I was hoping to see that. Mm-hmm. And I think... I saw like a mini movie where they show like it's the it's after the war and there's people kind of like researching on the war and they come across Tanya's Air Mage Battalion and they're like, wait, what is this? I've never heard of this one. Mm-hmm. And they look it up and they learn that it was like one of those uh, Rangers types of yeah. Units. And they're like, whoa, we didn't know this existed. And they like delve into it and they learn more. And they're like, wait, they won this battle? They won that? They were involved in this? How could we mm-hmm. never heard of all these accomplishments? And I couldn't tell if they won the war. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, no, they do that on purpose. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, I got to know what happened between. Then and now. Mm -hmm. I was going to say like now and then. Like I need to know what happened in between. And that's what drove me to watch more episodes. I was like. Mm -hmm. And I can't. I don't know what happened. I don't because the season just ended there. He didn't Mm -hmm. continue it. I think uh, I was looking it up. I think there is a movie. I don't know how much it covers. Hmm, I will look into that. Yeah, no, I'm probably going to watch it tomorrow. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it's like, it's really a show I wouldn't have watched, but because I was like curious about it and I like Isekai, I was like, hey, I'll give this a shot. Mm -hmm. And because she's such a sociopathic extreme person, I was so intrigued. Like, I wanted to know what happened next. And I could see it because the episode was right there for me. I was like, hell yeah. And she's like, she's not the traditional protagonist. Mm-hmm. She, You could almost say that she is the antagonist. Like, if... She'd be the antagonist in any other anime. <laughs> yeah, she would be. So that was that was another thing I was intrigued by. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'd, I wouldn't normally get interested in this type of character. I want to know more now. Like, uh, I feel like there's been some stories where after showing the main story, mm-hmm. they do like a like a spinoff or a side story 
showing the perspective of the antagonist or mm-hmm. the bad guy or people that are viewed as villains and you get to see why they did what they did mm-hmm. like what was their goal what was their drive what yeah, did they have what... to do what sacrifices they made mm-hmm. so because i saw some of the stuff like that that made me also more curious about tanya i'm like okay i want to see what else she'll do like how much how much is she gonna sacrifice mm-hmm. yeah I was just intrigued by Tanya and I wanted to know how she'll turn around the war because it was supposed to be a losing battle. But yeah. I want to know if she was going to change that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what kept me yeah. watching it. Yeah, it was kind of a similar situation for me. I was also fascinated with the uh, setting. Uh, just just the way in which uh, magic kind of changed the nature of existence out there, namely that um, technology is not as advanced in that setting as I guess it would have been in our world, but that uh, magic kind of uh, fills a couple of gaps, but... Um, Mostly just like creates opportunity where it wouldn't normally have existed. Like now there's a weird space between land and air and magic is there. Like it's where helicopters would be later in our timeline. Also, it was kind of weird looking at the various uh, artifices that they use to uh, fly. <laughs> Like, like, I like that. I can't remember if it was uh, not France or not Europe. One of them basically had skis. One of them had metal mounts. Yeah, that, like the, those, like those the little, armor, like, the, like the little, the little grocery store horses you put your kids on. You put the quarter <laughs> in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, those were funny. I saw that and I was like, what? <laughs> it's like, how does the, how does the other, how do the other armies not just start laughing when they see them ride in on those things? It kind of reminded me of like a sci-fi, um, sci-fi anime where like somebody that would come from He-Man or something. Mm-hmm. I know he meant on an anime, but like it looked like it would come out for something like that. Where... Yeah, those like weird uh, fantasy settings that feel strangely sci fi. Yeah. Where like they're trying to bring in, like you said, like there's no advanced technology, but it was replaced by advanced magic. Mm-hmm. So. Oh, yeah, where it's like a one for one thing where it's like, <laughs> yeah. okay, so you took out uh, planes. But you literally put like magic ships in there. <laughs> so it just feels like weird tech that works different. How would you describe this? Um, how would you how would you describe Tanya the evil to other people? Um, so a running gag with a friend of mine and his like crew that eat isekais up like candy um, is <laughs> when they're talking about anime to just have it be it's an isekai but then the description <laughs> so in this case it's an isekai that has two antagonists and one of them is God okay okay <laughs> that's, a, that's a good description that's a really good description. It's like very short, but it entices people. It makes them yeah. like, what? If you had to give the most concise description of this series, that could have been it. Not going to lie. I feel like um, Air Master was more interesting than Tanya. Um. They're interesting. They're in kind of different wheelhouses. 
Um, well, I thought, I thought um, Air Master was more interesting because as I was talking about Tanya the Evil with you, mm-hmm. I noticed that Tanya the Evil lacked characters. It did. While Air Master had... Air Master is nothing but characters. Right? So it was like the <laughs> opposite. I was like, ah! There's, there's no real plot to Air Master. It's just... Watch these characters beat people up and be funny. Ah, so like Tana the Evil had a plot, but Air Master had the diverse characters. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, the, between the two, it just really kind of comes down to personal preference because they're in very different like spaces, both in regards to genre and sort of just entertainment factor, but also they were made in like different time periods of anime. Like every mm-hmm. decade anime has, a, will at some point or another have like a drastic shift. Like, I think we're finally now getting away from the Moe blobs and slice of life shows being all anyone cares about, which is kind of neat for me. Um, you know, I kind of cut my teeth uh, on anime in the early 90s but i was also getting a lot of stuff from the 80s so my perception of what it is was decidedly different from like the younger crowd um <laughs> so you know su- suffice to say uh it- it's a weird comparison to make i guess but i don't know i like them both i just like them both in different ways i think uh I had an easier time watching Tanya because it was new to me. Ah. I like Air Master more as a whole, but like I was more interested. Like I like I it took me a little longer to get through Air Master than it did Tanya. <laughs> when I uh when I was refreshing my memory with Tanya the Evil. Mm-hmm. I was actually just listening to it in English. When I first saw it, I was watching it sub in Japanese. Mm -hmm. So I had to like read and watch it. And when I was re-watching it, I was actually multitasking. And Mm -hmm. I was was just listening to Tana the Evil. And I was like, huh, this works out for me because I still know what's going on. Yeah. I'll sometimes do that with like animes I've already seen, like whether I need background noise, if I'm like rewatching it for a podcast or something, or I just like just need something familiar. I'll often do that specifically with the dub. And then I'll just kind of like pop in on the scenes I like to like specifically the scenes I like rewatching. <laughs> Like, I've done that a couple of times with Seven Deadly Sins, where it's like, okay, I could just go back and rewatch the fight between um, Escanor and what is his name? Desterosa or something like that. The two hella broken characters. But I'd, I'd rather get the like build up of the whole episode. So let me just run the entire thing and then pop in when the fight happens. <laughs> I feel like I've done that before. Where like I'm um I'm watching a show with my partner and I've already seen it, but he hasn't. And I'm actually like reading manga on my phone and he thinks mm-hmm. I'm not paying attention and I'm just waiting for that part because I'm I, I kinda know what's going on, like I can hear it. And I know Mm -hmm. what's going on. And then once I know we get to that scene, I stop reading and I pay attention. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And he turns to me, he's like, oh, I thought you were interested. I was like, no, I was. (laughs) (laughs) You were more interested in his reaction, I bet. (laughs) It's like, oh, he's going to love this. (laughs) Yeah. Even though I... I think I think that Air Master is more interesting than Tana the Evil. I would still recommend Tana the Evil to people just to like have them watch something different. Mm-hmm. Because this is a darker story 
with a psychopathic main character. Yeah, if if the concept of having like a psychotic main character is interesting to you, then you know, there you go. Um if you are like dogmatically religious or atheist, this tone this show may have a very different tone to you. Oh. So it might it might be fun to watch on that end. <laughs> Because if you're like if you're like turbo in either direction, then you might be feeling differently about either Tanya or being X. So you know you might get a completely different context out of it. So you know maybe enjoy it on that end. Ah, oh, that's a good one. That's a really good one. I didn't think about that. Also, if you're into like. Like if you're really into uh, periods, like period pieces, or you really, or you're like a lore nerd like me, that was like one of the big selling points for me. It's just all the weird stuff they were doing with uh, World War One in regards to magic use. Mm. So if you're if you're like a lore nut like I am, then that's also a reason to enjoy this because they do some interesting stuff with it. Like um. When they were testing the orphans, mm-hmm. or when they were testing on new technology with magic, or you know, just kind of getting an idea as to where the mage units fit in the whole military structure, that they're not like the end all be all and all powerful. They suffer from artillery fire the same way planes do, mm-hmm. maybe even a little more because they're extra squishy. <laughs> and they're easier to hit. Well, they're easier to see, so they're easier to hit. Uh... Like I was I was looking at them and I was like, oh okay. I mean that's where I got the helicopter analogy from. I was literally thinking, okay, if these things existed in advance wars, they would either be air based mech units or they'd be helicopters. Now I'm curious what else they developed in this show. Mm-hmm. Darn you, one eye! You want to like <laughs> find the the light novel? It's what I do. Ask your that translated <laughs> somewhere. Ask your partner. It's what I do. I call it lore brain. <laughs> it turns on, and then I never shut up. <laughs> Is there anything else you like to talk about with Tanya the Evil? Um, I think we more or less covered everything I wanted to say in regards to it. Just <laughs> need to call that thing Tanya the Petty. <laughs> or Tanya the Evil and being X the Petty. Oh, I didn't I didn't even realize being X was being petty until you said it. I was like Oh, yeah, he is being petty. He is petty as fuck. Yeah, he is. God. It's just, you know, I was just look at some of this stuff and just think like, God, this is so unnecessary. <laughs> You're an all powerful being with like billions of because 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 we're talking about parallel universes, too. So like billions upon billions of people, he says anything, too. And they're just like. Oh my God, God, we love you. <laughs> but this one person says this stuff and you're like literally warping the world around forcing it to love you. It's, it's, it's unhealthy. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. One, I call them out. Call <laughs> Phoenix. Tell them they're being unhealthy. <laughs> they need help. He needs to find whatever like letter of being offers therapy. <laughs> or maybe reincarnate into someone and get therapy that way. I, I don't care how you do it. But, you know, let's stop it. Get some help. And now it is time for the paw question. Every episode, we have a question for the listeners slash viewers. If the platform allows it, you can answer in the comments below. If not, 
we have a Discord. This Discord link is available in the description. It will lead you to the Paul thread with the question displayed. After that, you can answer wherever you need to under manga or anime. Now, the Paul question for this episode is... In the previous episode, we talked about Air Master, which is action, martial arts, etc., etc. The question is, in that type of setting, what type of fighting style would you have? I'm Lihua Superfina, host of Podcasts Across Worlds. You can find me on all social media platforms at Lihua Superfina. Weekly, I upload videos about video games, manga, and candy masks. On youtube.com slash Lehua Superfina. I also stream every Tuesday, Thursdays, and Saturdays on twitch.tv slash Lehua Superfina. I am、uh, Lionel, aka One Eye, aka Jumper Cables.、Uh, don't get too confused if you find me being called something else somewhere else. I just have too many nicknames. But、uh, when I'm not here co hosting on one of Lehua's shows, I'm doing any number of shows on Hey Listen Radio. You can put heylistenradio.com in and you'll find it there. Or where we upload directly is soundcloud.com slash heylistenradio. I have a now dead anime podcast there, and we do have the live Heylisten Radio show coming out weekly. On Twitter, I am currently not jumper cables at Oltaku Connect. And that concludes our episode of Podcasts Across Worlds. Thank you all for tuning in. Keep reading manga, keep watching anime, and keep listening to podcasts across worlds. We'll see you on the next episode. Huge thanks to my Patreons and channel members for making this video possible. If you also want to be part of the Superfina party, you can click over here or become a channel member. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next video. And I do stream live on Twitch every Tuesdays. Thursdays and Saturdays. Hope to see you guys there, and I will see you on the next video. Fist bump! <laughs>